is uh, Omer Yudon, who will tell us about integrable tunnel scalars and final integrals. Thank you. Uh, let me first thank the organizers for this great conference and uh, the opportunity to present here. Um, I'm going to talk about something that is admittedly slightly off topic, uh, but I hope it won't be too much. Um, let's start with this slide that doesn't contain much information, but it will help you to set up a point of view. Uh, let's imagine you are working in an integrable quantum field theory, and you would like to compute something in a quantity at a given order in the perturbation uh, I've put a two-point function here for concreteness. Because all I'm going to say will be concrete for only for two-point functions, but you can replace this with anything that you believe you can compute using integrability methods. Now, uh, apart from uh, very powerful uh, bootstrap-like methods, there are two paths that you can choose from. Uh, one is the uh, usual Feynman diagram way that you can apply to any field theory that you have. You draw all the diagrams that you need to draw and you compute them. You uh, for these two-point functions. Uh, you have some type divergences, you normalize them, and you uh, find um, uh, results uh, in this form, the conformal theory, and you compute some anomalous dimensions. Now, uh, if you realize that your problem is actually equivalent to uh, uh, as a speed chain, an interaction speed, interacting speed chain, then also you can uh, diagonalize the Hamiltonian of the speed chain. Uh, you can uh, get that these are same anomalous dimensions. Of for as, as the eigenvalues of the simultaneum. And you get really excited that you get the same result. Now both methods have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the final diagram way has its own, uh, the obvious disadvantages that uh, the loop integrals are uh, uh, very um, common bottleneck. Whereas uh, the integrability uh, way is usually very powerful. However, it's rather abstract. So, um, I mean, it's, it, it takes a um, convincing to say that oh your theory is actually a spin chain. I mean four dimensional uh, uh, theory of interaction attacking particles. And it's rather conjectural and it, uh, yeah, it, it, so that's that's my complaint about it. But uh, my main complaint uh, is that um, there are, these are two very unrelated ways of competing the same thing and this. Cloud of dust is supposed to represent the the unclear links between the two approaches. Um, it would be really nice to understand how these two approaches are related, which will allow you to perhaps derive integrability from first principles. And uh, moreover, if you understand uh, these links, we can also uh, perhaps obtain some information about uh, the Feynman integrals, the loop integrals that compute the same thing. Uh, this is not so uh, easy to do in the uh, hydrogen atom of the 21st century, uh, but uh, there is a model that where, where these links are clearer and you can actually uh, compute uh, Feynman integrals using integrability. So, um, to, to show this, uh, this is my uh, plan. I will introduce this model of uh, two complex scalars with a particular interaction. Uh, from gamma deformed uh, maximum supersymmetric angles. And then I will show you a concrete example in which a complicated diagram or the uh, residues of thereof uh, will be computed from integrability. And then I will put the theory aside and, uh, and then I'll talk about the integrability of Fischer graphs. Actually, that will be a review. And the reason I'm going to talk about this is, to, uh, is I would like to argue that uh, the integrability of the graphs is related to the integrability of the theory. And then, uh, if I have time, I will mention some ongoing work where we generalize uh, this computation that I'm going to uh, mention in the second part. Well, let's start. Uh, I don't think I need to motivate this Lagrangian audience, although it's not a fa our favorite way of writing describing a theory. Um, this is uh, the uh, plane uh, in the of the Lagrangian with uh, quartic uh, scalar interactions, you call it like interactions, and uh, um, gauge was interacting with matter via covariant derivatives. Now, and there is also a defunct version of this theory, uh, which most easily uh, can be defined uh, by saying that uh, I should replace every product of fields, the scalars, fermions, or whatever, um, by a, a non-competitive product, 
uh, that is defined by a face that's modify, that modifies the origin product by a face, which depends on some vectors uh, that depend on what fields you multiply. These vectors Q that go into this face are tabulated here. Uh, in particular, for the blue ones, you have zeros. For fermions, you have uh, half integer entries. And for uh, the scalars, you have just the uh, unit vectors in uh, the first, second, and third directions. And very importantly, the space depends on three uh, deformation parameters. So, this is a, a once you do these deformations, you get a family of uh, theories that depend on uh, not only just for the, uh, on the coupling, but also three parameters. And here's what you get once you do this deformation. This is the Lagrangian, and if you compare the two, it is much more uglier. No surprise it's uglier because it's lost a lot, of, a lot of symmetry. In particular, the R symmetry is broken to its Cartan U1 cube. Uh, you can see this, well, obviously. So this I4 is singled out, and there are different phases multiplying different uh, R indices. Um, yeah, but uh, there we are. Okay. I'll transfer this Lagrangian to the next slide. Um, as I said, many symmetries have been broken. There's no supersymmetry whatsoever. There's no conformal symmetry. Um, to that, so this Lagrangian uh, gets renormalized. And by terms uh, that don't exist in this Lagrangian, so you need to add additional terms, but this is just a bare Lagrangian. And let me uh, suppress the counter terms now, because they won't be relevant to this discussion. Uh, but remarkably, it is still an integrable theory. You can't compute things Exactly in this theory, like you do in Euclid's voice of the original one. Now, I would like to consider this theory in a particular limit to show that the scale of theory is hidden inside here. The limit is uh, you take the, each to i gamma 3, gamma 3 is one of the deformation parameters to infinity, so gamma 3 is i uh, so minus i infinity, and I take the uh, top coupling to zero while keeping this combination. I call C, G to the uh, G times E to the I gamma 3 fixed. And once you go to this limit, all of these terms in the second and third lines uh, go away, are order G. Also this term, and only one of these uh, parting interactions survives, which I've put here. Now you end up with a theory of two complex scalars, which are phi 1 and phi 2, but I will call them uh, the blue scalar and the red scalar because easier to see in graphs. Uh, and uh, the interaction is like that, phi blue dagger, red dagger, blue, red. Uh, if you notice this is a, uh, this term is complex, the complex conjugate doesn't uh, appear here, and the theory is, is not even unitary. This interaction uh, play a very important problem, all of that I'm saying in the next slides. Uh, you can consider other limits. Uh, if I have time, I will uh, flash one uh, limit in the very end. Uh, so this is our model. Uh, so because it is a limit of an integrable theory, it is still integrable. Phi to the fourth theory uh, is not integrable, but this is a fancy version of it. Uh, so to speak, and it is integrable. There are no gauge fields and no supersymmetry. When you talk about versions for super diagonals, you some people like to say the uh, very high amount of symmetry of supersymmetry is very important for its integrability, but uh, it's not the case here. Uh, it is like the model theory renormalized by um, counterterms that don't exist in the Lagrangian. Uh, however, it's important that this coupling C uh, in the plane limit doesn't get renormalized. So there is a catalog of observables with conformal behavior, which you can compute exactly using uh, integrability. And you can talk about anomalous dimensions, etc. Um, so let's focus on the chiral interactions. Why do I call chiral? Chiral. Um, so you have two scalars, which are complex scalars to propagate the self arrows on them. And what this interaction says is, the red scalar can cross the blue scalar in one direction only. So it can go from here to here, it can come back. Now, this puts an extremely strict limitation on possible Feynman uh, diagrams you can write in the time limit. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's not, uh, nothing new, it exists in, in uh, other models, uh, in particular in uh, matrix models uh, that describe strings with discrete target spaces. Uh, let's see what diagrams that you can draw with this. Uh, for example, you cannot draw bubbles. So if 
I didn't put arrows on these diagonals because, because it's not a possible diagonal. Uh, if you go this way, then you cannot inter intersect the blue line again because that, that, will, that will violate the slope rule. And the sunsets are not possible either, so there are no master numbers. So the scalars are made masters. If you consider two point functions, for example, of, of two operators that are sitting in two different space time points, they uh, that have mostly blue scalars, let's say, and some red scalars, you will draw blue scalars from one point to the other, many of them, that will be the meridians of a, of a globe, a sphere. And the red scalar will go out from one space time point, it will cross the, one of the blues. And it will have to spiral around the globe and uh, come back. Uh, if you have two reds, it will you'll have something like that. Then uh, uh, you can uh, imagine that uh, at a given loop order, this is the only graph that you can draw. No, that would be important. And uh, also note that the, if you if you generalize these graphs, generalize meaning you draw more lines, more loops, more red lines, then what you'll get in the bulk of these graphs is it looks like a fishnet. So there will be uh, this will be a quartic fishnet, like a, like a, a lattice. And uh, if you ignore the boundaries, then what you have is uh, just a, just a, a, a quartic lattice in the bulk of these diagrams, which I uh, mentioned later. In the speed chain picture, uh, such interactions are defined, uh, uh, described by uh, an Hamiltonian of commuting fermions. If, you, if I see these red lines as excitations and the blue lines as vacua, uh, what this does is to shift a red excitation to the right and not to the left. So each uh, application of the Hamiltonian moves your uh, excitations to the right. Um, I would like to discuss the, uh, the 1 over NC methods, and that's why I've introduced a double line notation, and I will stick to this uh, colored uh, notation and uh, there are little arrows on this, these lines, I hope you can see them, so the directions don't matter. Okay. Um, so, as I uh, said, the complex is realized by only by uh, non planar diagrams, and this is one of them uh, that you can draw. Um, that's why uh, the counter term uh, is a double trace and comes with a 1 over nc. However, that doesn't mean that uh, this can be completely ignored in the planar limits. The uh, counter terms with 1 over nc uh, prefactors uh, sometimes play a leading in a 1 over nc role. For example, this uh, diagram that comes due to the interaction um, from, uh, from the interaction of the Bayer Lagrangian uh, is normalized by such a diagram. Uh, this is a two point function. So there's a, Operator here, an operator with the rectangular operators, and a blue scalar and a scalar here. If the length is 2, blue, red, uh, then the counter term has the same number of color loops, so it's, it's, the, uh, it's of the same ordering n as, as the original diagram, so this becomes important. But if you have more than three layer 2 scalars, like 3, 4, 5, then these are actually uh, subleading and you can, you can ignore them in the plane of and that allows you to write, uh, to talk about conformal correlators and anomalous dimensions. And uh, you can apply, as I mentioned before, the whole arsenal of ads cft integrability. Okay. Uh, let's apply this to an operator. Uh, the simplest operator you can think of is the VMM vacuum, which is just a local operator. Uh, it's a trace of L um, blue scalars. And you put one of these here, and it's dagger here, on the other space time point, or not around. Uh, the other diagram that you can draw uh, is of this type. So there are no red uh, scalars to connect in these operators. So the, the meridians will be all blue. Uh, if I put an interaction here, say, I have to carry on until it, it, it wraps around the globe. That's why they will be called uh, wrappings. Uh, and at a given loop order, there will be one single final diagram. To compute the anomalous dimensions as gamma, I only need the UV divergences of these graphs. Uh, that's why I can cut the head of this graph, beheaded, and I'll arrive to, uh, at such graphs, so generalized wheel graphs. The number of spokes, these uh, radial lines, correspond to the number of scalars we have, the blue lines, I should have drawn this blue. 
uh, and then the frames, the circles, are the red lines. So this is an example with uh, six uh, scalars, six spokes, and two uh, frames. Such integers in general are word now. Uh, with um, with two with, with a single frame, uh, they were known uh, at all the Porter by uh, due to works of David Porter. And with two frames, uh, there was a result by Eric uh, at uh, with, with six loops, so three spokes. And to com well, we don't know how to compute. Well, I don't know how to compute uh, more general wheels. Wait a minute. We we know the the lowest dimensions from from uh, integrability. We can uh, apply. Uh, we have to apply uh, thermodynamic beta on us because we have uh, wrappings here, uh, and uh, well, it is. Uh, Basically, um, in a mirror theory of the spin chain with, uh, uh, with uh, some mirror particles uh, that run around uh, these wrappings, uh, it's slightly more complicated, but certainly easier than uh, the diagram, so that I can, I can now reverse engineer the graph. Uh, but before I do that, let me uh, reveal the uh, simpler results that have been. Uh, uh, the, the one wrapping results that are already quite complicated with us, but simple. Um, in, the, in the full uh, gamma diffraction theory, due to uh, Matthias and collaborators, um, they are given by a, sing, uh, by a single family integral. In the full uh, gamma diffraction theory, that has all the gluons and fermions as well, uh, as well as other scalars. Uh, in our case, it's obvious because. This is the only graph that you can draw, uh, and if you go to the strong deformation limit and send one of the gammas to infinity, uh, you see that this, the gamma combines with the G, and you have the, uh, the coupling, the coupling uh, C of the scalar theory appear uh, correctly here. And they are just uh, multiple zeta values. Uh, sorry, single zeta values in this case, and uh, for double wrappings, there will be multiple zeta values. Uh, the, the, the double wrapping, two wrapping result uh, looks like this. There's an easy piece and there's a hard piece that I call A, which I will explain in the next slide. And it is given in terms of integrals over rapidities and sums over wrapping modes uh, around these uh, parallels of the globe. And I can, if I can compute A out, I know the uh, periods of uh, double wheel graphs at an even border. Now let's do this, but well, uh, let me flash a simple computation. The typical uh, thing that you have to do to compute AL is uh, some intervals and, uh, and infinite sums over uh, such uh, rational factors and uh, polygamma functions where, where the summation indices appear in the argument and integration indices appear in the argument. Uh, it's a standard exercise by now to do these such, in, uh, such integrals. Actually, you can do this for any L but with some extrapolation. And this is the result you arrive at. The only reason I'm not embarrassed to show such a big equation on a slide is that it has some interesting uh, properties. Such as, uh, it has uh, uniform transcendentality apart from this little last term, uh, which is responsible for um, subdivergence. But subdivergence are responsible for that little term. But the rest has uniform uh, uh, transcendentality weight. And uh, for any loop order, these graphs are given by only f3 zeta values. Um, I'm trying to simplify this, but I'm not sure if it simplifies anymore. So, uh, you, you managed to uh, reverse engineer a uh, complicated fun uh, integral uh, from the interpretability. But, uh, okay, so before I look at the slide, um, I, don't, I want to stress that this is not just a trick. Uh, I would like to uh, advocate that um, the Family integrals can be seen as integral systems, and this is nothing new either. This has been noticed by uh, Alexander Zamanchikov in 1980, and he uh, considered um, certain family diagrams, or graphs, sorry, uh, as, um, as 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 uh, as partition functions. Um, so you relate uh, uh, a a Feynman uh, diagram, a partial function in such a way, you draw a random line on a plane, you color the neighboring ones, and you put uh, propagators between uh, neighboring white domains with indices that depend on the angles of the, uh, angles, uh, of the intersecting lines. 
or in four dimensions, this will be a rectangular lattice. And the integrability manifest manifests itself uh, as the star triangle uh, relation. Uh, so if you if you want to do this integral uh, in this vertex, uh, considering these three as external vertices, what you have to do is to move uh, this horizontal vertical line uh, across this intersection point. And once you move this that way, then you will get a tri uh, triangle. Uh, it is so the integral manifests itself as a young maxter equation for for. Uh, so this is a bit uh, conceptual, but uh, formal. Uh, let me give a concrete example here. The famous uh, ladder integrals that are very well studied uh, are given like this at any of the border. So if they have conformal symmetry, I can put one point of the points to infinity, and you can uh, put one point to zero, and they depend on uh, two space time coordinates now. And you can consider these integrals, or the generator functions thereof, as a, a matrix uh, element of an integral Hamiltonian, which is like so. So the Hamiltonian is constructed by these uh, wedges that make up the ladder. We get rid of these propagators because of some uh, infinity. And then you can compute uh, these integrals um, by diagonalizing the Hamiltonian. The single wheel integrals that are uh, related to the almost dimensions of this theory are just the trace of the Hamiltonian. Uh, the, sorry, the, yes, the generating function of these is the choice of the um, Now, at the moment, we are trying to generalize this game uh, to uh, more complicated operators to be able to compute uh, more complicated graphs. In particular, we consider uh, excited operators, uh, so there's a uh, red scalar mixing into the blue ones. Uh, with, if you have one red scalar only, the story is simple. Uh, the graphs, the only graphs that you can draw, are the uh, singular limits of non letter intervals, and their summation is also known, and they, this reproduces the anomalous dimensions that are computed by, uh, through ABA. If you add another, another red uh, scale, and as I promised, for a, a given external configuration, there is only a single graph that you can draw, however, there is operator mixing. Operators with different placements of red scalars have non zero two point functions. That's why you can only uh, talk about, um, you can only relate integrals to each other. But this is not too bad because some of these integrals that I show uh, here are complicated and some of them are easy. By which I mean, at five loops, say, these integrals have two three dimensional memoirs presentations or hard ones that have, I couldn't find less than 12 or 13. Okay. So you can relate these integrals to each other. Well, the, I'm talking about divergences here, uh, as long as I speak about uh, almost dimensions, but for other quantities, you can also talk about the full integrals. Uh, yeah, that's what we are busy uh, with at the moment. And uh, as I promised, let me present you another uh, similar theory uh, from the uh, different uh, axon supersymmetry canvas, whose Lagrangian I copied here again. Now, in the, in the beginning, to get the scalar theory, I had sent uh, gamma 3 to i infinity. Now, I take all three gamma uh, to be the same, I send all of them to I infinity. In this case, uh, you don't lose supersymmetry, uh, you don't lo you lose uh, conformal symmetry, and you get a, a theory with three uh, chiral multiplets, with uh, three complex scalars that interact in the same way as the, the scalars uh, do, and some Yukawa couplings. Um, this is actually the strong beta deformation of any cosmological triangles. As I said, the supersymmetry and conformal symmetry. Uh, it has similar interactions, and uh, we haven't studied, studied this theory very well, but probably the uh, graphs will be also very restricted. And now, using super graphs, you can consider cubic vertices, not just quantum vertices, as in the scalar case. And as the uh, Kyber scalar model, it is also not, not unitary. Let me summarize what I've said. I've presented a four-dimensional integrable model of uh, chiral scalars, uh, the particularly simple family diagram expansion, which links the integrability of the quantum field theory uh, with that of the individual integrals. Um, and what we, are, uh, what we would like to do uh, in the future, in the near future, is to uh, explore the full potential of uh, the spectrum uh, to compute the residues of family integrals, so considering different operators and that uh, give us different uh, diagrams. 
Uh, we'd like to understand the strong part of the picture because all these uh, diagrams you have to look like world sheets. But uh, it, it doesn't seem to be that straightforward now to us at least. And the obvious thing today is to add more kinematics to this. At the, at the moment you are completing just numbers, and it will be nice to complete integrals that have logical kinematics. So uh, that was it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.
Jésus serait saint comme un 